Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante, Jeff Kelly. We're with Wikibon.org, and this is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's flagship production. We're here at the MIT Information Quality Conference. It's a, co it's a symposium, really, for the chief data officer. Uh, we're on the MIT ca uh, campus in the, the Tang building, and it's, it's a two-day event, and the discussion is really around information quality, data governance. It's a topic that is really not spoken a lot about in the big data circles that the Cube covers, uh, but increasingly, like security, it's becoming a, 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 a more top of mind subject. Tony O'Brien is here. He's a practitioner uh, turned to the university community. He's an associate lecturer at the Sheffield Business School, a uh, long time practitioner in the financial services world. Tony, welcome to the Cube. Thank you very much. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about your background and how you ended up here in the world of university. Well, having spent 40 plus years in, in finance, um, over the years you have data, pro you have problems. And I eventually came to the conclusion that, that a lot of this, these problems manifest themselves from poor data. Um, and always, it's always bad news. And it always seems to hit the, the P&L account. Um, and then, about about, uh, ten years ago, um, I was uh, uh, we got we, we following a job role change. I was asked to do something about finance. Um, then question and say, well, what do you do? Um, fortunately, at the time, I was I, I ran I was doing a doctor of business administration uh, a degree at a university in the UK, and we we ran the um, the data quality improvement program alongside um, a doctoral degree. And one of the ideas that we tried to do was to combine theory and practice with improving managerial and professional practice, whilst also at the same time informing uh, the, the um, academic community. Um, we, we actually um, generated quite a bit of success over a period of time. And one of the things that we, that, that we actually managed to develop was, was certain maybe concepts that we felt that could apply to a wider range than just outside my organization. So as a, as a business finance practitioner, you found that, that poor data was often the, the root of, of the problem. In many instances, yes, wrong decisions, but management tended to blame the application or the systems rather than the data itself. Ah, okay, so they're pointing the finger at the wrong place. They're blaming the innocent, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, yeah. And then certainly the accountants when they were also br blaming the people providing the inf the information. Well, you're an accountant, so you know how it goes. When things are good, you know, you really don't get too much of a pat in Absolutely. the back. When things are bad, you hear about it. <laughs> you, you, you rush, rush for the hills. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. So, so talk a little bit about uh, uh, the practical case study. How did you, you know, resolve such issues, such problems? Talk about, you know, whether it's technology, the people, the organizational, the process. Take us through that. Well, we, we tackled it really from, from the softer issues in terms of maybe the non-technical side. The organization uh, implemented an ERP system mm -hmm. um, in the latter part of the 90s, and um, it had, the implementation went well, but we were having the data problems. Um, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so basically, one of the, th one of the things we, we realized we, we needed to early doors was to, if you want to resolve a problem, then you have to start measuring it. Uh, because you can't know if you're improving unless you have a benchmark or mm -hmm. progressive, um, some form of Inverted from maybe score to know whether you're improving or whether you are actually declining. So you had a baseline. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And also, what we decided to do, we decided to do initially, initially, we decided to try and cascade it through the organization. And the organization comprised of about 12 different t um, business streams across um, then 85 factories in the UK and six, and six business offices, which was later reduced to 54 um, factories. And we originally cascaded the data quality improvement initiative through the finance side because ostensibly that was where the problem we thought the problem. And we um, by measuring, um, we were able to show a fairly well, yes, fairly good improvement over a period of time. However, we then had, for one for for, for certain reasons, say a decline, and, and really the big breakthrough what sort of switched on the lights was that over a period of five months, I visited 48 of the 54 factories. And what we, 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 we took the, the bottom-up approach. We organized me, 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 meetings and focus groups 
with the people in each of the factories, or a collection of uh, maybe three or four factories, spoke to the people who processed the orders, who, who uh, purchased orders, who booked the goods in, who actually manufactured the, the, the goods, who dispatched them, who chased the invoices, who, who paid the customers. In fact, the people who processed the, the actual the operations in terms of the organization. And what we found is that these were the people who, who really wanted to, to make the improvements. Yeah. They were the people. They've been screaming for years. Exactly. And, yeah. and, and, and what we, 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 we tried to do, and we used, in collaboration with, with the degree, we used something called action research, whereby we, we, we like the plan, do, check, act. We, uh, we, circu we, we had a debate, we circulated um, the notes of the debate, and whilst I was sort of like the semi invigilator, um, we, we, we tried to work it so that one was not necessarily directly involved, not leading them, but to get them to come up with ideas. And, and, then, uh, and I think one of the, one of the great advantages, uh, or I, having worked for the organisation for 21 years, you were known, so you had a degree of trust. And it wasn't as though somebody was, researcher was parachuted in. And, and basically, a lot of the groundswell and support for the improvement of, of the data quality initiative came from the very people who, as you say, may have well have been screaming for some help. And, and what we then found is, is that champions developed. Um, I was maybe the name, I wouldn't say project leader, I, I sort of it tried to initiate it. However, champions emerged from within the businesses um, who then took it forward. Mm. Because we were data, any data quality initiative um, is okay. At the, um, the first speaker today talked about data quality is not a project. Right. And, and what we, I say, the, cri the criteria was that any data quality initiative we have has got to be sustainable. So in other words, it had to be sustained when I walked away. And what happened, champions emerged. And say a factory, you had a production controller who were about six or seven staff. They were setting their own targets mm. for their own staff without me asking them because they saw that the improvements that were taking place and we measured it um, on a daily basis, um, they, could, they could measure their improvement by factory, by business, and, and they, could, they then set targets for their, because they realized that getting the data, to improve the data, made their life better. So you did these forensics, essentially. You went into 48 of the 54 factories, and, and you, were, you were setting these baselines. How did you measure? The quality of data. How, did you well, take a fact and well then? Well, we had an ERP system. Yep. And we we said basically, um, we start off with a sales order coming through. We finally, at the end of that transaction, the customer pays. Mm -hmm. And also, we may need raw materials or we may need services, so we've got to pay. We got to interact with suppliers. Yep. So we we had certain key performance indicators. So we we measured the incidences of credit notes to invoices the incidences of, mm -hmm. of uh, supplier payment problems, um, overdue production orders, sales orders, um, and, and uh, purchase orders, uh, incidences of invoices not being generated. So we had uh, 11 different indicators, and um, each of which could, in, in, uh, could, could actually um, comprise of data quality, because within an ERP system, if you've, if you've got uh, if you've got, uh, say, a, p p p a purchase order that hasn't been receipted or, or a production order that hasn't been completed, demand is still shown out there. And, mm -hmm. and it was the interaction of mm -hmm. all these different transactions, um, but also uh, um, we, we were then able to use this to actually... Ex the, 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 the factory manager, or a manager, was able to use these, this uh, information as a daily expediter, mm -hmm. because behind, behind the KPIs, there was a list of all those invoices or all those orders that hadn't been processed. So instead of him having to have knowledge to go into the system to actually list them, his daily KPIs listed them all. Mm. And they were easily accessible in that area of the BI uh, um, information area because they were adjacent to all his other factory and business information. So it was there, it was there every single morning. And mm -hmm. so these KPIs was to assist the day-to-day -day operational as it's supposed to measure, but not something to stick to beat them with. And those, and those KPIs were developed 
uh, in some kind of consensus? Or they, they were, and what we actually basically did, we weighted them. So if you had yeah. a purchase order that was overdue a month, it had one score. If it was overdue over 13 months, it, it, that score was multiplied by 13 times, so we actually weighted it. Mm -hmm. um, and and so, so therefore, there was, a, there was a bit of a measure, and what we also found is there was a consensus across the businesses. Okay, not everybody bought into it, but uh, the other point is what I also had from, from the start was the executive support of the finance director. Uh, I, didn't mm. need to, I didn't need to use him all the time, but he knew that he was fully supportive. Right. Yeah, talk a little bit more about that. You mentioned uh, you know, going to really the, the people on the ground that are where the, a lot of these issues are, yep. are first yep. visible. And then finding those, uh, or, or some of those people kind of develop into um, you know, kind of project leaders who are really uh, talking up the importance of the, of the initiative. Yes. Uh, to keep it ongoing, it's an initiative, not a project. It's a continuing, ab continuing ab evolution. Absolutely. So how do, you, um, how, do, how, does that, how do you develop some of those people, those roles? How do you identify who, who, who are those people going to be? Does it just happen organically? And once you walk away, how do they continue the momentum? Well, it, it emerged. Um, if, if we take um, over the period of, say, the four and a half years, mm -hmm. um, we had, a, on the daily measurement, we had an improvement of about 28% in the first uh, six months. Because it's easy, when if you had any, not easy, but if you have any improvement program, you can, you can get the quick wins, can't you? Mm -hmm. And then, y you, uh, but also, it was actually then publicizing those quick wins to make sure you keep the momentum going. We then had a dip uh, because of a structural, restructural program. Um, and, and, th and, and, and then um, the champions sort of emerged because I think the people were, were being switched on. And, and, and what transpired was that I then, the last 12 months before I retired, I then took a back seat, and the only, my only involvement was to publish the statistics on a monthly basis. And that period when I, um, when I stood, stood back, we'd had an improvement of about 50% over then the three and a half years. Mm. In the 12 months before, that, before I retired, it improved by another 6%. So, so the momentum, if you've, if you've had a 50% improvement and over three years and then have a further 6% improvement on top of that, mm. not, not only have you sus sustained the level, but you've actually pushed it That's forward. That's a cumulative effect mm. of all that benefit. Exactly, because yeah. the quick wins are easy, aren't they? Mm, sure. And, and, and it's very easy to fall back into old customs, mm. but it looked as though the, the guys then had taken it forward. And, and, and then it, after I'd left the organization, uh, the news came back that it, they'd maintained at that level. So. You're now taking this knowledge, um, this story, many other stories, I'm sure, and you're bringing them to university. Yes. Um, how, uh, how's that going? What's your role there? And well, what happened was, having retired, I, I sort of, uh, um, uh, with the doctor, I then got a phone call, would you like to work two or three days a week at Sheffield Hallam University, Sheffield Business School? And, uh, and that's, uh, and it's real, uh, it's, it's sort of like a post-retirement, uh, but it's ch challenging, really challenging. Mm. And it, one of the things, several things as well, one, you, you're able then to, basically it's undergraduate level UK and partly on an MBA course, but you're then able to relate theory and practice and actually tell them what happens in real life business circumstances and pass on lessons uh, with, with stories, et cetera, et cetera, uh, um, and, uh, from the things you've learned over the period of time. And what we've also done is to collaborate with a couple of organizations to run um, part of their management development group, and one of which is in data management. Which, uh, and we're now being able, they're now speaking to people who are well in the, in the four 30s, 40s, 50s, um, I I introducing the concept of data management to them. And we're actually uh, spelling out some of the horror stories which you can get from, from, from various um, research. And, and, and lights have been switched on there. Mm. Excellent. All right, Tony, well, listen, thanks very much for coming and sharing your insights and your practical experience. Good luck with the, uh, the lecture circuit and your retirement. It was really a pleasure Thank meeting you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank Good you, guys. You. Thank All you. All right, keep it right there. Jeff Kelly and I will be back. We're live. This is theCUBE. We're live here at MIT at the Information Quality Symposium. Uh, keep it right there. We'll be right back.